Hey, what's going on? It's Joe Rock. Here we are backstage at the White Snake Show with guitarist Joel Holkster. Joel, thanks for joining us today. Hey. So now. Thanks for having me, bro. Ah, our pleasure, man. Now, Joel, an amazing guitar player. Obviously here with White Snake, but also a player with Trans Siberian Orchestra and Cher. So you know the guy's got some chops. So let's talk about what you work with. What's your main go to guitar when you're doing a show like this? Uh, well, it changes for each gig. So okay. uh, with White Sync, I have basically five custom guitars mm -hmm. that I had made for the gig. Uh, so two Gibson Custom Shop uh, guitars, essentially, that have uh, medallions set into them mm -hmm. that I had made at a mint. That was kind of cool with the White Sync logo. Okay. Just I wanted to kind of just hit with stuff that was like one of a kind when I started on the gig, and, okay. uh, and just go with something fresh. It felt very fun starting a new band and uh, so also two uh, USA Fenders same deal the medallion mm -hmm. sent into the body um, trying to think if there's anything I mean on the Gibsons there's a snake stencil that they came up uh -huh. with that's kind of a cool design the Fenders are just kind of as is with the medallions um, the Gibsons have the 498s and the 490 in terms of pickups right. uh, uh, just the you know, standard and, and uh, the Fenders, I think, are the Fat 50s for the single coils and Doug Aldrich uh, humbuckers from Sir in the bridge position, which are cool. And, uh, and then uh, a small company called Atomic out of the uh, Phoenix area yeah. made me that purple uh, Swarovski crystal covered. Uh, I just saw pictures of that from yeah. last night's show that you did, yeah. and I was like, wow, that's a pretty sharp looking yeah, guitar. Yeah, very ambitious guys. They did it. That was their idea, and uh, it's played really well. I mean, it's almost to the point where I can only use it on a couple of songs because <laughs> people just kind of point and go like, wow, check that out. <laughs> It looks fantastic, fantastic yeah. when the lights hit it and everything. So. The Gibsons that we're talking about, they're essentially Les Paul bodies, right? Yeah, they're Les Pauls. Okay, yeah. there you go. And uh, the Fenders, are we talking Strat? Are we talking Telecaster? What are we, what are we dealing with here? Fender Strat. Both of them yeah. Strats, okay. Mm -hmm. So three pickups, you still operate them as three, you just throw any uh, humbuckers in there and everything. Single, and... single, double. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, perfect. So now, what are you playing through to achieve the sound? What are the amps that you're playing through? Uh, so I've been rolling with the Friedman B100s that we have here, uh, basically only using one at a time. The mm -hmm. other one just serves as a backup. Uh, and that's basically a two-channel amp with a boost. Right. So uh, in the back, we are using a custom audio MXR pedal mm -hmm. that you can engage from the, from the foot controller. Uh, and that's what I use for my actual lead boost, okay. um, technically. But yeah, the Freemans have done great for me. I mean, it's a great modded Marshall tone, essentially. So the Les Paul in the, into the Marshall formula, for the most part, stands true, <laughs> just with the Friedman name there you go. on it. Uh, I have for effects, I've been using the, the Fractal X effects, which most people normally associate with modeling mm -hmm. or actually using an amp sound on there. But I don't right. use any of that with this. Just okay. really the reverb and delay. And it's very, very similar. All I really change is uh, the timing of the delay, and uh, we get the BPMs from Tommy Aldridge and make sure that it's stay, you know, all in time. Even on, on my rhythms, I like kind of a quick slap even, or possibly okay. a quarter note, but just very faint to kind of widen the tone a little bit, but um, not a lot of repeats. But it's nice because they're all done to the tempo of the song. Yeah. So if it's there, it kind of feels in the pocket or in the groove. Um, and yeah, that's about it. I mean, White okay. Sink is not a big effects gig. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's really it. I used a, a Rotophase pedal for a while when we were doing the Purple Tour on mm -hmm. a couple things, but it's just sort of delay and reverb and a, a Les Paul into a Marshall. Right, there yeah. you go. So now we, you did make, we did mention a little bit about uh, pedals. What is, are you dealing with a board? Are you dealing with just a couple pedals all together? Especially, you know, you say you're not using a lot, so. It always makes me... Well, with this, we, we just are kind of old school, still using the old Ground Control Pro uh, Voodoo Lab mm -hmm. uh, units. And, and uh, Drew Foppy, my tech, operates some, some of my changes from back here. Uh, you see the label Master on this particular uh -huh. one. Uh, because there are times where I have to be center stage for a solo or stage left, and yeah. I, I really just can't make it back to my pedal board. So uh, Drew, who's doing an amazing job out here, uh, has done uh, a handful of changes for me, on, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the, the moment. And I have one of these out there as well and do most of the changes myself just to keep yeah. it real and keep it like it's a a real band playing and not everything's... <laughs> we don't run any tracks with White Snake. There's... Uh, yeah. Nowadays, a lot of pop acts, they have that, so the MIDI is doing all the changes right. for you. 
So you basically program your sounds and just let the, the computer yeah. roll and do all the MIDI changes for you. So not the case of Whitesnake. We're very old school. We still have the obviously the Marshall 412s you can see uh, the backs of right here that yeah. were behind the stage itself. But so uh, those are loaded with green backs, I believe. Uh, that's my that's always been my preference. Yeah. The 25 watt Celestians and I like a 57. Kind of like uh, if this is the voice coil, the center of the yeah. speaker, half on, half off. That's so Got you it. get the you get the brightness, but you can roll. Obviously, when you do that and you're getting the voice coil, you don't have to yeah. have as much treble or bright on right. your head. Um, I tend to think of like the amp as like a mid-range driver, more or less. Cause okay, I, I get that. Especially with a Les Paul, I get plenty of low end. Yeah. So my general formula on a Marshall is bass at about three, mids on about eight, and yeah. treble on really way down, like one or two. Okay. Uh, I, I think uh, this particular tour we've had, we've got a little brighter than uh, ones in the past, yeah. but I don't know why. It's just probably because I'm getting more deaf <laughs> and what sounds good to me in my in-ears. Uh, uh, I totally know that too well. Believe me, hearing loss yeah. is a big deal. I totally get that. But that's, so. uh, yeah, that, that's really the, the simple thing. You can see, obviously, I have a TC electronics unit in here, and that just really serves as a backup for the fractal. So if anything mm -hmm. went down with the fractal, we at least have a delay for my solos. Uh, so just kind of living in there. I have a rack mount crybaby. So um, if you see on my board right here that this is what lives on the stage, uh, our opening act of Black Moods is doing their sound check here shortly, so we've struck it. But there's the controller mm -hmm. for the uh, for the crybaby, and I do have an onstage tuner, but I rarely have to use it because Drew does such an amazing job stringing and stretching and. Uh, I just have, I don't think I've had a tuning issue literally yeah. this entire run, wow. so uh, I do have one though, should anything go awry. Um, you can see Drew has uh, been cool enough to lay out some of my throwaway picks, <laughs> just made a star access makes these, oh, guy does just great designs, JC Powers there. Um, but I also really technically use on most of the stuff, these stainless steel picks. Uh, that's made by a company called Alice. I always find them on eBay. Uh, I got turned on to those by Brad Gillis when I joined Night Ranger. Oh, okay. Yeah. Brad and Jeff Watson used to use metal picks, and so Brad asked me if I'd check it out. I did. Always Ernie Ball. I've been Ernie Ball for like forever, so that is the string of choice. Uh, and what gauge are you at? Uh, 11. 11 okay. to 48. We're tuned down with White Snake too, so uh, especially on a shorter scale guitar like a Gibson. You'd be surprised. The 11s feel yeah. like 10s. I mean, really, really slinky. So no problem at all being able to get a good wide vibrato. Right. And so we've talked about all this stuff for White Snake. Now you obviously take out a different rig when you play with TSO and with Cher. Mm -hmm. What are the what are the differences in when you with those? It's things? huge. I mean, with TSO, that basically when I joined, Alex Skolnick had been using a pod. It was just yeah. direct, and so uh, I eventually kind of upgraded to the Fractal XFX mm -hmm. and got that onto the gig, but um, all the changes on that have to happen from the tech on the side yeah. of the stage. But it's just running a Fractal XFX, that's all it is. Wow, and, okay. And having a good front of house guy that knows how to EQ it and <laughs> have, it, have it sound ballsy. And, uh, but you know, that, that's really just a yeah. crunch, crunch rhythm, transparent, clean, and obviously a lead depending mm -hmm. on, you know, just right uh, different delay amounts and yeah. uh, mix amounts. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything back here. I was going to uh, ask about the slide, yeah, so I'm glad actually, you picked yeah, that up. Actually, yeah, Drew turned me on to this. I like it, though. It's the Joe Perry slide. That's what I've been using out here. Uh, it works great for me. And uh, obviously, just the throwaway picks mounted on there. And yeah. uh, we do have this little device, the PB05, made by who the hell knows. <laughs> I don't know, but it basically senses when I'm at the microphone or not. Yeah. So it basically cuts off any kind of just stage oh, noise wow. that, okay. that would... Um, I guess inhibit the uh, yeah. sound quality of the show. So yeah, no, I like that's that a nice lot. Nice to have. Yeah. All right. Um, but there you go, man. That that's. Well, uh, the one thing we didn't cover yet, though, because you talked a little about TSO there. Just what's the share rig like? Uh, so same deal. Oh, okay. Uh, that, uh, that started out. I subbed for Dave Barrio at a huge. He was mm -hmm. using a Friedman Runt as yeah. the head and a big pedal board with lots of effects. And I was. It was a unique task because normally you get a fractal and you just make up some sounds you think sound cool for the gig. But right. this particular one, then what they asked me to do uh, when it was looking like I was going to take over more full time was to t have an AB foot switch and spend all my time with Dave's rig yeah. and AB and just try and make it exactly like it. 
Okay. Uh, so that was an interesting task, and actually it turned out to be one of the strengths of the fractal, in, yeah. in my opinion. Once okay. you, you have a moment like that where you need to recreate it, it was, it was cool. It was a cool challenge and very happy with it. And out there, there's a weird mix of guitars yeah. that I use. With TSO, we didn't really cover the guitars either. <laughs> right. uh, anything with well, humbuckers. Well, I think we spoke yeah. about it on the phone, and you said you didn't really take out as much with that, but you felt almost compelled to because the other guys were. <laughs> well, TSO, my first year, yeah, I used just like my, my white custom yeah. Les Paul. And basically, I just grew and grew my collection, and I've been getting a little bit like, crazier and crazier every year yeah. with the amount that I take out. I think I took out maybe 12 last year wow, or something okay. like that. So, uh, yeah, lots of guitars, but I could probably play the TSO show with a handful. Yeah. It's just mainly for visual and for right. fun. All just right. to make it exciting and, and to make my tech miserable yeah. out there. <laughs> Galen Henson, <laughs> that's you, baby. <laughs> too uh, cool. And then Cher, uh, there's, I'm trying to think what else is to it, man. The guitars. I use this Tomahawk Telecaster I've had for a very long time. I'm a big Tele guy, so uh, I love to hear that. <laughs> use a Fe uh, Fender Jazzmaster oh, okay. for some of the clean stuff that I've had also for a while. Uh, gosh, what else? There's a double neck that I don't even really know the brand, uh, mm -hmm. but Dave Barry had one and they had that guy build another one. She had a song that was, uh, well, this little run of the 60s stuff. Yeah, okay. So it's basically meant to be a Dan Electro or a Silvertone kind okay. of sounding guitar with the lipstick pickups. Uh, but there was a moment where it was either go open to uh, just standard tuning, Capo 3 standard yeah. tuning. <laughs> and so what the tech had done for Dave, had, mm -hmm. he had built it a minor third shorter, three frets yeah. shorter. So wow, you okay. could go uh, just standard tuning, go three frets shorter, yeah. standard tuning. Uh, so that guitar is in there. The main one that everybody sees pictures of is the Phil Collin Model Jackson, okay. the PC-1. Yeah. And I mainly use that because there's no cabinet on deck and to get the sustain, uh, those moments where I step out with her and on my own, it's really important that I engage the audience. And I did this. Uh, that's a big thing with TSO too. I use a lot of guitars as sustainers because it frees up my hands to be able to um, engage the audience a little right. bit. To look at the audience, you don't have to worry as much about keeping notes going. That's yeah. just brutal when you don't have a cabinet on stage and you get a nice cycle of, uh, I, I guess, signal to be right. able to, to maintain sustain. So, right. uh, yeah, it's a big, big tool of mine when, when it comes to those two gigs. Cool. Yeah. All right, well, listen, uh, you know, I really appreciate you doing this. One thing we're going to want to do is just get, I want to get a shot of Drew because you spoke about him. I'm like, Drew, step in it. We want to get, you know, Come we want to get Drew. you in a shot. <laughs> so just so everyone knows. Is he going to be visible? This is Drew that he keeps talking about. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I exist. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Thanks for having me. Blessed Joel's to have him. Blessed yeah. to have him. Amazing tech. Thank you, sir. Amazing tech. Joel's a great guitar player, man. He's, he's pretty badass, to be honest. So it's, fun to, it's fun to work for someone who plays every single note on the guitar. Um, <laughs> it's very rare that they play every single note 100 times during the show, but... He plays it with picks and his double fingers. It's pretty awesome. I'm contractually obligated. <laughs> pay, pay, <laughs> paid by the note. I can't, I can't ever see him during the show, but I hear every note. And I'm blocked by the whole set. So I actually do the show completely blind, uh, just with my ears, and uh, channel switch just by I have notes and I wrote out the songs to how it is and when he needs it. Or if I see him through the drum kit over there, I know he's not going to make it back. I'll hit the button for him so he doesn't have to run over there and try and trip or something. Yeah. There you go. It's a, it's a great, great job, and White Snake's awesome. So. Perfect. Well, there you go. Killer. Thank All you right. very much. Thank nice you very you. much. Thank you. There you go.